Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So now, this I have done last time, but I want to revisit once again because these are very important expressions and very soon you are going to do an assignment in which you will need these equations. Okay. So there is something called like a force weight form which focuses only on the forces acting and the weights of the various system components. So as per this formulation, the net lift is equal to the gross lift which is equal to weight of the displaced air minus weight of the lifting gas minus weight of the air in the balloon air. This is very straightforward, right? nothing to discuss here. Similarly, uh, the lift, uh, the, the, gross stack, the gross lift we have seen in the expression last in the last page is, a go, is going to be uh, obtainable in terms of the pressure P s minus the humidity effect upon T a into K into V e n v. So therefore, now if you look at the weight of the lifting gas, because we are looking at the force weight form, we will now bring in the infraction fraction y. Oh, sorry, we will bring in the purity fraction y. In the previous uh, calculations, we have actually not looked at the purity issues. So, if you uh, if you want to bring in the purity, then the weight of the lifting gas will be equal to the uh, the density of the lifting gas into the volume occupied by lifting gas. The volume occupied by lifting gas will be uh, equal to the amount that is there in the envelope minus the balloon air. So, that is why we have to use the infraction fraction i. So, weight of the air in the balloon air will be using the expression derived last time for the same expression I have just copied here. Now, we can go for some simplification. So, what do you do? You say let us neglect the value of y. We say y is equal to 100 percent or 1. Again get rid of P S P, delta P S P, get rid of delta T S H, also get rid of E. So, with that you get a much simpler expression which says that the net static lift is equal to 1 minus R D P G times P S divided by T A I into K into V E and V. So, V E and V is the envelope volume which is the total volume. Inside it there are two volumes, the volume of the air in the balloon and volume of the lifting gas. K is the constant which we have already seen. P s is the pressure acting outside. 1 minus R d into P g takes care of the fact that not the entire air inside is equal to the lifting gas. There is some uh, uh, sorry ambient air, there is some lifting gas and some ambient air. So, R d P g is the relative density of the pure gas and T a is the ambient temperature. Now, the same expressions we can also look at from the density point of view, keeping in mind that the lift available is equal to the difference of density times the volume. So, what will happen in that case is that the net lift will be density of the ambient air rho a minus density of the air of the lifting gas inside the envelope which will be density of lifting gas times i where i is the infraction fraction minus rho b a density of the balloon air bracket 1 minus i because only that much is occupied by the balloon. Air. So, this is basically the difference of density the classical rho a minus rho g that multiplied by the envelope volume into g. This is another way of expressing the net static lift. In this we are now going to insert those equations, those expressions for the various terms. So, for density of air keeping in mind the effect of humidity, for density of lifting gas keeping in mind the effect of super pressure and super heat and the gas purity fraction and for the density of the balloon air keeping in mind 
super pressure, super heat, and the presence of humidity. Okay, so all three areas: the ambient air, the lifting gas inside, and the balloon. The air inside the balloon. All three of them have their own densities, and those are obtained by this expression. Now it is your task. Okay, because you will keep staring at the board and say yes, yes, yes. Your task is now to insert these expressions and get me the expression for net lift. You will be surprised; it will be a very small expression because many terms will cancel out. So please do it, and when you finish, please raise your hand. What I need is I need an expression for L N net static lift by replacing the Three terms Yes. What is the basic difference between the P A and P S? How can we find out the in the given question? Is it a P A or P S? P S is the total pressure of uh, partial pressure of dry air and uh, water vapor. No, no, no. P S S stands for standard. P S is essentially The ambient pressure under standard conditions in the atmosphere at that altitude. P A is the actual pressure of the ambient air because you may operate in the atmosphere which is not I S A. It may be I S A plus ten. Look, I S A is a standard atmosphere where the sea level temperature is fifteen degrees centigrade. But if you go to sea level in Mumbai, the temperature is not 15 degrees; it may be 30 degrees, which means we are operating in ISA plus 15. Correct. What it means is, at every altitude above Mumbai, the pressure, temperature, density, etc., or pressure and I should say temperature, the temperature of the ambient air will be equal to temperature at at um, at the ISA. Plus 15 degrees. Okay, so when you operate under non-ISA conditions, the pressure and density of the air is not standard. It is P A T A. Therefore, the density is rho A. So please understand, P S is the standard ambient air pressure at that altitude. P A is the actual ambient air pressure at that altitude. And these two will be same if you are operating under standard ISA conditions. These two will be different in case you operate under non-standard. Okay. Now, the presence of water vapor can be there at under any atmosphere. That depends on the value of T, or it shows itself in terms of E. Okay. Right. Does somebody have the expression? So all you need to do is so let's try to uh, let's try to achieve it here. If, uh, do it here if we can. So essentially, L N is equal to rho A minus rho L G I minus rho B A one. Minus I into V E N V G. So this is equal to rho A can be replaced by P S minus one minus T naught by. Ha. Huh. It will be this. This minus rho L G. Now rho L G is one minus one minus R D W V times E. Not e; it will be y in this case, where y is the all of it into P 
ps plus delta psp over ta plus delta tsh again you have t naught rho naught by p naught then again you have minus rho b a so it is p s plus delta p s p minus 1 minus r d w v times e times same t naught rho naught by p naught by t a plus t delta s h. Now, let us assume that there is no superheat which means this will go, this will go. No, R d is the relative density of the pure gas with respect to the gas air outside. There is no water vapor term there. See the water vapor term is taken care in terms in terms of E that is the uh, humidity effect. In the case of rho B A, in the case of rho L G. So, in the case of rho L G, uh, what is Y? Y is the purity of the lip of the of the lifting gas. Okay. Now, RdPg means what? The relative density of the lifting gas with respect to air. Correct. So, this is the rho of the lifting gas upon rho of ambient air. Okay. So, you are saying what should be here? In which expression? In this expression, rho LG. Oh, here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I am looking here and I am sorry, you are, you, are, you are right. Okay. Now, we also remove, uh, we also remove the super pressure. That means, we need to knock off this term, we not knock off this term. Then, suppose we assume pure lifting gas. That means, this I y is equal to 1. And let us also ignore humidity. So, that means, this term goes this term goes and also this term goes. So, what do you get? Here you get P s by T a T naught rho naught by P naught minus this will be this is again P s no? no this is 1 minus huh? So, this will be minus 1 minus 0 that is 1, again it will be P s by T a, T naught rho naught by P naught. So, these two terms cancel out minus P s by T a, T naught rho naught by P naught. So, I knocked off one term by mistake. 1 minus R d P g. This term I, I knocked off by mistake. So, that term will remain here. Okay. And basically, if you look at this expression, this expression is basically equal to 1 by R. And P by R t is equal to rho density. So, that is why it will become rho a, which is the ambient air density. And sigma sigma is basically rho into rho by rho 0. So, if I take sigma rho 0 that is equal to rho. So, that is how we are getting rho a sigma rho a sigma 0 here and this term of course will is going to remain. So, it simplifies a lot if you go for assumptions. Okay. Now, not every LTO vehicle is basically going to be an airship with balloon. There are many other LTO vehicles. 
so can you name some other LTO vehicle which will not have just an envelope and balloon in? So, for example, rigid airships. What do you have in rigid airships? Do you have a balloon? You do not have a balloon in rigid airships. Okay. What happens in rigid airships is that the gas is stored in individual gas bags, many of them. And these gas bags are inside the structure. There is a there is a structure, there is a covering over the structure. And inside the structure, there are independent gas bags. So, therefore, the volume occupied by each gas bag will be a partial volume of the total envelope volume, and that too, because of the presence of the structure, the total volume of the outside envelope is not available for the gas. Although the volume of the air displaced is equal to the outer volume of the body. But the volume occupied by lifting gas, if you add it up, it is not going to be same because there are other things inside. So, in rigid airships, we assume that there is something, there is some volume V and each of these balloon, sorry, each of these gas bags are going to occupy some volume with its own inflation fraction because the radius of the gas bag will be less than the radius of the airship envelope at any point. So, that effect is taken care by individual I n and as you go from nose to the tip because there is a curvature in the envelope shape, even the infraction fraction will not be the same. You will have for instance less value of I at the front and the back and more value of I at the constant diameter or central portions. So, therefore, the infraction fraction I can be replaced by summation of individual refraction, infraction fractions times individual volumes of the n gas bags upon the total envelope. Secondly, there are no balloonets in uh, there are no balloonets in a rigid airship. You do not need balloonets in the rigid airship because you are not supposed to maintain any internal pressure. In a rigid airship, there is nothing like a balloon needed because you have an external envelope which does not deform under the when the loads coming on the envelope are taken care by the structure. So, it will not allow the balloon to compress or expand and inside a large volume of the envelope is filled with gas bags and they are individual because if one of them leaks it does not lead to catastrophic failure or loss of lift. So, you can always uh, bring back the same equations as last time. Uh, this, these equations we have seen so many times now, so I have just copied and pasted them. How will they be changed when you go for rigid airships? So, what will happen in rigid airships? Please tell me one by one, which terms will drop off, which terms will change if you have a rigid airship?